Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, the ladies, girls and boys, boys and girls. It's Friday, or should we call it Friday? Welcome back to our channel, Inspirational Minutes with David. You know it's about us. It's always, always, always about us. Today, uh, medicine today, our topic today will be, oh wait, but wait, hold up, wait, 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 wait. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notifications. And let you know when um when we're coming on. Hit the bell notification. Hit the subscribe button. And we're gonna have a little talk today since it's Friday. And I had a I had a long week this week. At the job. But hey, we made it. We made it to Friday. Yay, Friday! I got my bow tie on. And polka dots. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications to let you know when our channel is on. Our medicine today, our inspirational minutes with David today is properly titled Slave Code The Hidden Mind Program Behind the Language in the solution to break it. We're gonna play on words a little bit. You know, I'm semantically blessed sometimes. Hey, sometimes you have to toot your own horn. Sometimes you just have to be fly. First, love yourself. And no one give you any type of compliments. You give compliments to yourself. Look in the mirror and say, yeah, I am the S it. I am, I am all that in a bag of chips. Hidden language behind the slave code. Since it's been a, a long week, let's talk about it. And let's talk about how to break it. You probably already know the solution to break it. We talk about it almost every week. But let's talk about the slave code and words. The slave code, the hidden mind program inside the language of words. I had a long week this week. A long work week, which equals work week. Hold up, hold what? Ooh, wow, hold up. Do I need a, wait, wait. We're gonna start this off early. We're gonna start drop a bomb right now to get this started right now. Okay, hold up, hold up, wait, wait. Wait, I had a long work week equals work week. So I had a long work, W-O-R-K, week, W-E-E-K, equals work week, work week, W-E-A-K. The week in, W-E-E-K-E-N-D, equals weekend, W-E-A-K-E-N-D. E D weekend. So you arrive weekend to your week in from your work week because work made you ha huh, you got it. It made you weak. W E A K. <laughs> you see, they call week days because they put you in a week days. <laughs> This stuff is funny. They're called weekdays because they put you in a week days. D A Z E. They put you in a W E A K D A Z E. Then what comes out to that? A break is called a break during during your slave field day because most slaves. Will break. Most well, slaves will break. No, we don't want to. We don't. We don't want to know nothing about the career when we talking about when we talking about the work week. It's just some bombs. 
week after President Biden announced... We don't want to hear that either. But listen, let's go. Let's get it. They call week days because they put you in a week days. A break is called a break during your week field day or your slave field day because most slaves will literally break. They will literally break without the break. They will be physically broken. A slave master know this and provide and provided the break because it helps produce more milk. More milk from the human cattle. You see, the original, the original break, of course, given to a slave came when they passed out from complete exhaustion. A complete exhaustion. Or they actually died. The slave owner would say he's broke or broken or taking it. Permanent break. How do you pronounce war? W-O-R. War. That's right. It's pronounced where? War. W-A-R. And war, W-O-R, with a K on the end of it is work. Oh, wow. We're hitting semantics. We're hitting it today. We're going in today. We're going in with the semantic part of things today. So with that being said, with that being said, we're dropping another bomb because I had some interference in the beginning of the video. So we're dropping bombs. So that's right. It's pronounced war, W-A-R, which comes from war, W-O-R, with a K on the end. It is work, W O R K. Now, first of all, let me let me detonate your mind, detonate your mind some more. Did you know the K comes from the Egyptian level for death? Oh yeah, it did. So you you work as so work actually means war plus death. What the fuck is here? I mean, the use of hypno based language. Designed by human farmers helps increase control over the slave class by planting, planting the fertile subconscious with seeds of perpetual substitute or servitude. Speaking of self first, control is control. Wait, wow, the point. Control, control is con, c o n. Troll, T R O L L, the con, con man that's trolling. The con job designed for the trolls. You see, we get up in the morning, but morning, M O U R N I N G, is a form of sorrow, a grieving. I mean, wow, you get to work and you say hello as you arrive, but why is our greeting hell, H E L L, low, L O W? Why is hell even a part of the greeting? Now, my question why, why do other words refer to hot places surround us like hot mail? Hot mail. Hot mail, H O T M A I L, or hot mail, H O T. M A L E or Far Fox. Who is the historical hot male? I ask. AKA, oh, could it be the devil? Which the word lived, L I V E D, the devil, which the word lived, L I V E D, spelled backwards. And you get up in the morning early. In the morning, M O U R N I N G, to earn a living, but earn is also earn. You are in a vessel to keep see many ashes of your body. Morning, 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 M O U R N I N G is another word synonymous with death. You cry. You wake from your slumber, S L U M dash B E R, from your slum, 
with coffee. The same prefix used in the word coffin. <laughs> Many people, man, they're smart. Egyptian, in origin, origin spell Kathy, K A F F E E, or Kafin, Kafin, or Kafin, K A F F I N. Ka, K A, meaning the spirit after death. You go to your job, right? You go to your job. But job in the Bible is a man who's heavily tormented by God. Pronounce Job. Are you are you are you getting it now? Do you understand semantics or words? So Job or Job in the Bible has his wealth, health, and children stolen, taken away from him by Satan. But Satan was given permission by God to do so. So why is our work, our job, literally named, literally named after a man, Job, 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 who has his health, children, and wealth taken all away? Ask me that. Riddle me this and give me some answers. Playing on words. Why are God, God, and Satan working together on the job or on Job? Why? To make his life more miserable, I ask? For our slavery, we're given $20 bills, $50 bills, $100 bills, etc., etc., etc. But aren't bills, but aren't bills something you pay? Aren't a bill, B I L L, something that you pay? Something that you owe? In a restaurant, you're given a, a bill, a bill of $50, $150. Don't you owe that $150? So, with that being said, there lies the secret in plain sight. Our payments are called bills by human farmers because we owe it back to them. First of all, gain recognized. First in taxes and then in useless, meaningless purchases. I have to blame myself first. And we waste our money trying to rapidly decorate our jail cells. Right on down on the human form. You see, we spend our bills on soul, on soulless purchases from large corporations that our social engineers literally own. They laugh at how they live, how goofy, how stupid that we really are. This is why most people have no money because we're not being paid to be because we're not paid we're not being paid to be slaves. We're giving bills, B-I-L-L-S, that we need to pay. We're paying to be literally slaves. You see, you obey the watch. You're always looking at your watch. So you obey the watch on time because the watch, the watch, the watch is designed to be the watcher, a slave driver. You know, you're looking at the time, you're going to work, you're looking at the time, you're looking at your watch. Oh, golly, I'm going to be about two, three, four, five minutes late. I got to get on time. I have to get on time to work. So, you obey the watch on time because the watch is designed to be the watcher or slave driver. And what drives the, save, the slaves to work? The watch watches you and signifies the wrist chain worn by someone who isn't in control of their own time. The necktie, oh my God. The necktie is originally designed to signify the dog collar or the neck chain, meaning being owned and controlled by someone else. You need to have a collar shirt on to where the necktie is around your freaking throat. The necktie means you're tied and controlled by another. A slave to the strip. Talking to self first. It, it, it's literally blew me away too. The slaves can only pick the color and quality of their tie but can never choose to be free with the tie around their neck. 
Most people at work have a title, T-I-T-I-T-L-E, or title is really T-I-T-E-L, T-I-E, tell, go tell something. The symbolism of how your title tells others that you are or who, that you are who you are tied to. Your tie tail signifies who controls the tie, the dog collar, around your neck, around the collared shirt. People often wear a uniform. Una means one. One uniform. It's derived from the word uni, meaning uni, U-N-I, means one. And form, meaning a way to be. A uniform means you are programmed and conditioned to act like everyone else were in the same uniform. Equaling no independence, no free will. Your morality and ethics are spoken for already. Inject that other slave with toxic with a toxic vaccine. Serve the other slave some poisonous coffee. Go kill slaves in other countries. Inside fake wars where our slave master control both sides. Welcome to your slave life. You see, our suit and tie is the most common uniform signifying our willingness to outsource our morality and ethics to one another. Your behavior is dictated by forces outside of yourself. The removal of free will. You arrive on time. The word time is T-I-M-E. Tommy. T-I-M-E. Or Tommy. Tommy to the freaking change so the work can begin. Put the tie around my neck so I can, so I can obey and comply to the slave master. The cufflinks represent the cufflinks or the links of another slavery based chain around the wrist, yet they're made from gold or silver and we think we're free. We lie to ourselves because Lying is a word that means we lie down. Lying, L-Y-I-N-G, means that we lie, L-I-E, down, D-O-W-N. Submitting to our slavery instead of standing up to the slave master. We'll change our change of cast iron for change of gold or silver. The person in charge means the person who conducts the electricity as the charge is electrical or, or energy term. This describes the energy thrown into us from the slave master, making us perform and dance with their electricity. Their electricity. As we had our own personal electrical or electrical charge or free will will surgically be removed by the master's indoctrination system and slates of mind. You see, during conventional slavery, the slave owner had to incur all costs, including housing, health, health care, food, cleaning of the slave quarters, clothing, birthing of the new slaves, raising the, the child slaves, um, what else? Transportation of the slaves back and forth to work, celebration, clean up after a national disaster, slave entertainment, schooling, indoctrination, indoctrination, and of new slave children to be good slaves, etc., etc., etc. It really evolved over the time and centuries, hasn't it? A slave owner's profit is always revenue minus expenses. No different than any business that we have today. Return on investments to R or oh, I. I have a master's. I know what it means. You see, the big trick, the big trick was to tell the slaves that they were free. Let them pay all those expenses, allow them to come back to the plantation, and then tax them in order to actually make more profit compared to the original slavery concept with little or no chance of rebellion or resistance. All, taxa all taxation is meant to increase a slave's dependent, increase a slave's dependent upon the masters, upon the masters who print the money, who print the money and give the money out. So tax, so taxation, let me explain to you what taxation 
is meant to increase the slave dependent on their slavery as people taking the tax away from the slaves, print the money themselves, and therefore they don't have any use for it. Taxation is about keeping the slave down. That's it. It's about keeping the slave down. Taxation has one purpose. And its purpose is only one uno purpose that it serves. One purpose only. And it's to make the slave dependent upon common, dependent on coming back to the modern plantations of slavery, day in and day out. And if the slave starts to save their money, get them a TV or get them a television, a TV full of negative role modeling and watch the slave magically go into depth. D-E-B-T. Now, if the slave still has money, Organize a stock market crash or increase the taxes. Death. The people who print the money have no use for extra fake paper money. That's why they're getting rid of it. Which they can print at any time and in any quantity they rightfully desire. The entire drive of the tax system is to make sure the slave has no extra money to keep you in debt to keep you in debt as to provide them with enough freedom to figure any of this out they, they know that they know that you're not going to use your critical thinking skills they know that you're not going to question your why slavery was never abolished it evolved and the plantation was simply expanded and they mock us inside the language. They laugh, at us. they laugh at us inside the semantics of the words and the language. Everyone was tricked into becoming a slave while believing they're free. The language is loaded with many disempowered subconsciousness cues because your human formers have been at this game so much longer a long time. They've been playing this game a long time. They are pros in it. They've been playing this game so much longer than they allow us to ever know. Do you know what's going on? Are you sure? The elite already knew about the quantum leap. That's why they released that thing. We're switching subjects. So we're playing on words and we're looking at the semantics. And now I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, fam, I'm going to give you the solution. Hit the subscribe button. I'm going to give you the solution on how to break this. We know what they're doing. I try to involve myself. And when I get the evolution, I bring it back to you, fam. So the elite already knew about the quantum leap. That's why they released that thing. That's why they release that thing. It doesn't suit them that they, that we are free and they can't help it. We are powerful in love and they underestimate us, which is why they are in a hurry to officially launch a new world order. Quantum leap. Has already been produced. You see, listen, family. The dark elites, the dark elites are very afraid. They're scared. They knew the human collective was reaching a very high vibration, but were unaware. They was oblivious of how far or how many awake souls there are now. They, they see, see when, when they were doing it, when they was, when they was. You know, hitting us with the with the pandemic of the scamdemic of the schemes and the plans that they had. You know, man plotting plan. But guys, the best of all, plotting planners. You see, they was completely unaware of how far or how many away souls there are now. They are no longer they no longer hide their attacks or direct and front end. 
There are still those who are not able to see, but that doesn't mean it's not real. Attacks are going to be increased. They're going to try every means that people that, that people don't wake up to, that the awakenings can't communicate to not wake up others. And that the advanced ones are seen as crazy or criminals or conspiracy theories or conspiracy the, the, or theories or, or people who are crazy and loony and loco. They just are conspiracy theories. They don't know. They, David, have you went mad? Whatever you do, no matter what you do, the quantum leap has already occurred. It is unstoppable. Humanity already contemplates animal assembles, already respects Mother Earth, already understands that there is no separation. The souls who embody already arrive as teachers, not to experience, but embody for love. But to embody for love. We may witness the total change or not. The transition may last a week or 300 years. But it's unstoppable. This train that we're on, that they thought that we wasn't going to be on, it cannot be stopped. We're a freight train. We're moving fast, people. Whatever happens during the transition, remember that you offered to be here. And now, you are the drivers. You, people. You, family. You. You are the drivers of change. You are the driver. The drivers of change. And whatever happens, whatever you see, you have a responsibility. Don't forget that. You will request one thing. Just one. And don't let it be food. Don't let it be food. It's all you should do. It's that simple. And please, again, please, do not let it be food. You see, human beings, amongst other things, are one of the most powerful generations, the, the most powerful generators of energy in, assist, in existence. We are the most powerful generation generators. We are vortexes. Depending on the polarity you align, create a frequency or another. These entities feed off negative frequencies. We've been feeding them for the millennia. The awakening, the awakening of humanity, tipped the collective vortex toward the positive pole. Hence, they are attacking with such fierceness. Fierceness, they're attacking it because we're coming out with love. We're coming out and we're coming together. We are becoming awakened. They are starving. Surely, you already knew, or maybe it's the first time this message comes to you. But hey, never mind. Ask yourself if it, rena if it renaissances, if it renaissances with you. Believe nothing. Connect with your soul and observe. Pay attention. Question your why. And if your soul, your spirit, if it tells you that it's true, don't waste a freaking second more of your existence and serve it as food. F-O-O-D. Eliminate the low passions of your life. Hate, grudge, Envy, fear, fake expectations appearing real, vices, food that come from the suffering of another being, lies, ambition, selfishness, sadness, distrust, all this generates this energy. Food for the dark. Be aware of your emotions. And if you ever feel like this, change your energy and change it fast. Change your energy fast. Play music. That elevates you. Sing and dance. Breathe. Turn on the incense. Or put, put an incense up. Or hug your cats or your dogs or your pets. Or even your family. Go for, go for a nature walk to the park. Go for a run. I do it every Sunday. Meditate. Exercise. Do whatever. Do whatever it takes. 
whatever it takes, but immediately, immediately, ASAP, 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 immediately change that energy because you're serving food. Always be mindful. It's the only thing being asked of you. Don't feed the dark sides. Feed your soul with everything that helps you rise. If you get used to living in the frequency of love, your reality will change to your will effortlessly. You are unstoppable. You are a powerful being. Don't fear. Free your mind. Free your mind from the matrix. Focus your attention on what you want, but most of all, enjoy. Be happy. Smile. Sing. Dance. And love. Because love is you. Love is you. Love is not wanted. Love is not expected. Love must not come one day. Love is not a horseback ride. You can't manipulate anyone to get their love. You can't manipulate yourself. You can't manipulate yourself either. And if you win love, if you win it, it's unreliable. If you lose love, it's not really love. Love is here. Neither found nor lost. It's only here. And the more desperately you seek for love, the more, the more communicative to the universe that you give love, that you are not worthy of him. Again, the more desperately you seek love, more communicate to the universe that you are not worthy of love. Your job is to not seek love then, but to be. Know it in your very existence. Know it in your very essence. Feel how imbued with your own being. Hear how it slides from your inhalation when you breathe and how it glows through you when you exhale. Suspend the search. Suspend the search. No longer look for love. No longer look for love. Don't look for it no more. You know why? Love is you. If you made it this far in our video, inspirational, day, inspirational Minutes with David, hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. I love me because I love you. And if you love you, in return, you'll love me. My name is David. I am the fly, optician. And what we, our little talk today, can I hold you to it? Can I hold you to it? That's how we win. We win with love. That's how we get out that negative program, the slave code, the hidden mind program inside the language. I just gave you this solution. I love you in truth. Until next time, peace.